we are live with top four Amani Edwards versus Anthony with Search Crew. Search Crew, first time we see it all stream, actually. We'll see if Search Crew is too much to handle for the unique Chilai deck or if Chilai can use its powerful weapons to take down uh, yet another meta contender. We've seen Chilai a few times on stream today, but we haven't seen the Surge Goo, which is why we featured this in the top four. Amani Edwards behind their masterful pilot of the Chilai deck, and we got Anthony behind his trusty Surge Goo deck. Let's see what both of these players have in store for us today. They do have an extra hour and 30 minutes, so normally it's a 60 minute time, but in Top Cut, we do an hour and 30 minutes as per the Dragon Ball Super floor rules. So we shall see who can take it in this best of three match to determine who will move on to the finals of the Pro Play Tour Online series. First energy for the Surge Goo player is a Beerus. Chilai ability after charging a Krillin in Android 18. So Sergeku looks like he's on the blue yellow base. It might be a tricolor. It most likely will be a tricolor. Hey, we might even see five color or four color. The good old four color. That's technically five color, actually, if you count the black, but we might I just want to see a resurgence of or a, at least just a presence of that new five color Goku. The one that's black and requires all four different colors. But then him being black is like the fifth color technically, right? So. Okay, cool. So now it is Surge Ku's turn. He's gonna charge another Beerus Fickle God. Okay, so he might just be base. Just these two base with the light splash and maybe red, I would assume. Just so that he can have some uh, obviously ways to awaken. Otherwise there's no way for this leader to awaken if he doesn't have red, so. See how much he actually has committed to the red spot. It might be it might be just a, a light uh, splash on blue. We'll see. Super Dragon Ball coming down for Amani. Turn two. It's pretty. It's been like clockwork almost in his deck. So we'll see. Tone down the borders are cutting off the energy. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Let me zoom out for you really quick. There you go. That should be a little bit better for you. No problem, man. Yeah, it's a, sometimes you got to toggle with the background here, which there's a few different ways to toggle with the background on a tap. I mean, uh, on Octagon, which is pretty cool. All right, let's see how Surge 2 spends their turn three. He's going to untap, draw for turn. Yeah, no, we're actually in the process of uh, changing a few things about it. 
we just got to put, um, we're going to start putting a little bit of information on all the blank spots. Super low still. My volume is super low. Hopefully this is not, hopefully this is a little bit better. Is this a little bit better? I just got to put the mic close to the face like this. Is it, is it better? Hopefully it's better. Okay, so wow, a double strike Chompa in the charge. That's crazy. Um, that's pretty. That's pretty awkward, honestly. I, I, I would assume you don't want to have too many like just mono red charges. Maybe he's just like maybe his multicolor is just. I would assume like a Mecha Freezer, like the Energy Blight, the the red blue. But I guess he just goes a solid red here. Keeps up three, so he actually represents a Frost Deadly Poison here if he wants to depending on whether he's going to play anything. But uh, assuming that he didn't combo here, it's safe to assume that he's probably not going to bring down a Bardock Ape or anything similar like that. I wonder if he's playing maybe the dogs too. Probably not, but I want to see the Surge Coup with dogs. It's a very good deck. Stereo Music is stereo. What does that mean? Put the mic in your mouth. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I, our... Um, I gotta change the audio somehow. I don't know how to change that, but I, I understand that it's only coming out of. Uh, if you have headphones, it's only coming out of the right. This is a top four. This is a top four match, guys. We're in our top four. You are mono, the stereo, stereo. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. That's probably. That's jargon to me, honestly. That I don't mess with. But I'm gonna look into it a little bit more after uh, after this stream. Hopefully, we'll have it fixed by Saturday. Let me see if I can throw on like top four on here somewhere. a few pieces of this uh, overlay to, to make it a little bit uh, more informative going forward. But appreciate you guys sticking through the first online tournament stream from start to finish. I mean, obviously Anthony and these guys did it. Uh, unfortunately, they were they got untapped. Get it? They got untapped. Platform just crashed. Tournament was canceled. But uh, we were thankful enough to get people on board with Octagon. Brand new. Well, not brand new, but like I'm pretty sure it was here before on top or vice versa. But point is, this has been around, but we're just trying to mitigate traffic off one under the other. So one doesn't overload, right? So that's essentially what we're doing. And this one seems like it's been pretty reliable so far. Everyone's had nothing but great uh, feedback from it. Nobody's really like DC been kicked. Servers haven't crashed. So... That's what we want to see. We want to see a smooth tournament experience for everyone participating and a professional event management system, just like we have in-house. We have a great Bardock Ape going in the combos. This is going to get summoned on the field for free and going to draw Surge Coup a card. This is primarily their form of threats that they play on the board. Now, this is normally can be followed up with a Bergamo if the Bardock taps something. That's why I mentioned, like, Hey, maybe he's playing the universe. I think it's like nine. Universe nine dogs. Uh, because Bergamo plays very well with the Bardock. You know, Bardock tapping something down. Then you bring out the Bergamo. It's really cool. Uh, but we have yet to see enough about Anthony's deck to see exactly what version he's playing. If he's maybe just maybe just playing this just a standard um, color combination here. Which maybe we have yet to see a new draft box card in kind of like his new take on it but this deck is so good that it's it's just like a toolbox deck honestly that's what i like to call it because it has so many tools to do so many things and it doesn't really need to do much because the leader is always inherently drawing you so many cards and it's great on defense great on offense it's just powerful dr Jero down for amani that's going to get him either one of his maidens to the drop well yeah it's probably going to get him 
whatever maiden he he needs in the drop. It can also get him the the Sun Goku when he just has all the maidens set up. He gets the Sun Goku ape in there to allow him to draw a few cards and kind of get deeper into his deck. But primarily, Doctor Jiro's role in this deck is just to get one of the maidens there in the drop area so that he can maiden transformation. And it looks like he's going to go ahead and take that opportunity to arrival the Krillin as well. It looks like the Dr. Jiro sent this Ribrian Punishing Passion to the drop area. So this is going to be able to set up a discard 2 later in the game by banishing it and paying 2 energy. So it's essentially a reverse ape. It'll do the same uh, utility for the most part where you're just going to pay 2 energy to discard 2 cards instead of paying 2 energy to draw 2 cards. So it's pretty good because it fits the theme of the deck. Oh, and we're looking at Frieza Double-Edged Sword. This is a new one. What does this card do? Can only be played from any area by sk by skills except for its own. For four energy, choose one, one battle card of yours and one of your opponents. They both get minus 25k. Then play this card from your hand. So for four, he can come out for essentially three almost um, by KOing, I mean, targeting the right amount of battle cards. And then activate main, choose one universe seven in your hand and place it in your drop area. Add this card from your drop area to your hand. Wow, pretty good card. This is definitely going to see some play, and uh, it actually sees perfect play in this deck. Just being able to have some type of recursion, a card that you can always discard with Goku. And then, at worst, it can always come out and really just take two cards out. Sure, it might be taking out one of your own cards, but normally the one that you pick is going to be much worse than the one that you pick from your opponent. So, in horror. <laughs> but I can't make it out. I'm whispering. There's no way I'm whispering. Stop it. There's no way I'm whispering. It must be your, like, speakers. You must be, like, listening to... I don't know. You must have your volume down to nothing. <laughs> Alright, so instead of using his turn four to uh, play a Maiden Transformation, it looks like he didn't have the the appropriate targets in the, in the drop to make it worth his while. So he kind of just went with a Ribrian Punishing Passion to just discard two from his opponent's hand, which I believe here we're looking at Anthony's hand right now. He still has seven cards in hand. Surgeku is not an easy deck to get down to zero just because his leader is always inherently plusing one. And then you have cards like the Great Saiyan Bardock, I mean, Great Saiyan Instincts, Sun Goku, which you can just always at any time just discard on the whim of your leader's ability and then just have it ready to draw yourself two cards. Wow, he's playing Frieza Emperor of Universe 7. So this is going to be a pretty cool card because I think this evolves over the, the red Frieza. Yeah, it says uh, EX Evolve for one. Place one Universe 7 from your hand in the drop area. Universe 7 Frieza with energy cost of five or more. Yeah, that energy. Yep, yeah, that, that Frieza does have a five or more energy cost. So that's pretty cool. For five energy, you can bring this out essentially, right? As long as your leader cards yell. Yeah, wow. That is really cool. That is really unique. That's what I want to see. All right, so we're going to see a Krillin going into the Bardock Ape, and we're going to combo into it. Okay. I wonder if he's going to arrival a Broly here while, while he's at it. Rivaling a Broly here would have been able to tap one of these energies down to make sure that he didn't respond with his own ape. Looks like Amani ending his turn. Anthony's going to draw up to seven. Compared to Amani's 12, that's a pretty big difference to make. We'll see if... Well... In search, who I think you charge all the way up to at least six. So I don't think you'd skip charge like you would in Jiren. Is he skipping charge? He might be skipping charge. Looks like he's skipping charge, yeah. Sometimes when the hand, but well, the cards in your hand are just so good. I 
Anthony's going to draw up to eight cards now, and he's going to discard one. Shuffling around his cards in his hand. We can see that real time. <laughs> hand shuffling. For those of you who really like hand shuffling like myself, it must be a struggle playing online. You really can't hand shuffle as, as, as efficiently. Looks like he's going to discard a Frieza double-edged sword here, which is a pretty good discard because he can buy that back whenever he wants, essentially. So it looks like Anthony's just going to go for 10 here. But Amani is awakened here. So I don't know if he knows that. Or maybe he just knew and just wanted to draw, uh, kind of like just cycle through. But he's keeping four energy open and passing the turn. Okay. He might have it SS, SS, uh, SSB Vegeta or SS... Whatever the SS... I think it's just SS Vegeta. The one from Draftbox 4. He might be holding that up. Anthony not charging, not playing a card, just drawing, attacking with leader, discarding, and passing. Interesting. Mani swinging in with Chilai awakened. Krillin into Surgeku. Just continuing to push Surgeku down to 6 life now. Chi Lai sitting at 6 life as well. Anthony at 9 to Amani's 13 in hand. Amani up on energy despite going second. Anthony deciding to skip a charge phase last turn. Let's see if he does a charge. He does. He finds something that he does indeed want to charge and that's Beerus the Fickle God and see what he decides to play if anything at all No counters from Amani. Anthony swinging at 10. That's swinging at 15 with his 10, actually. Exploiting weakness. There it is. Looks like Amani knowing a little bit better than that, just not playing into it. Heads a play. Looks like a great 8 Bardock is going to come down. On the offensive. Barak's going to come on board. Draw Anthony another card. Anthony trying to crawl back into the game. Still sitting at a four card deficit. 14 to 10. Anthony up on life though. 6 to 5. Amani does take that. Take that attack, by the way. And now Anthony trying to get in there with a double striking ape. Could only imagine that Amani's going to try to defend this or even play this Kakunsa right here. 
Kakunsa, great cards. Four energy negate, but it will KO on summon. I wonder if he has it. No counters from Amani. 20k from Anthony. Amani says, I take it. Amani goes down to three. Wow, that must be tough. Amani with five energy open couldn't defend a 20k? I'm sure he could have. Amani up to 16 cards in hand. Seems like an unnecessary damage to take, but Amani knows this deck better than any of us, so I'm sure he has something up his sleeve. Oh, unfortunately, this is not a two energy negate. Not in oh, yeah, it is. Never mind. He's a green leader. Very good. I think, uh, who was it? Andrew Duvall. We saw him on stream round one and round two. He was playing this, but he couldn't ever play it for two because he's Shenron leader, and Shenron is black. So this, this only gets reduced cost in green leader decks. So, yeah, extremely good in this particular deck. We're going to see Krillin and Android 18 going at Surge Q, taking advantage of Surge Q's ability to stay on that unawakened side. Amani's taking this opportunity to just push. He's going to go and put a green and a yellow into his combo area for an arrival. We're going to see Arrival Broly come out here. Arrival Broly is going to take down one of the energy and draw Amani a card to further extend his combos. I wonder if we see a double Broly here. We we may may as well see a double Broly here. We're going to hit the double, the multicolored energy with Broly. Amani's going to draw a card off that. He might draw another Broly or might draw something to kind of make his decision a little bit more clear as to whether what what he wants to do here. Anthony deciding to respond here with SS Vegeta exploiting weakness on the target of the energy. This is going to minus the board 20k, I believe. So it is going to get this Krillin out of combat. Which is actually pretty good. And it's going to make this Broly down to 5k. Broly survives. With a mere 5k. I believe the Exploding Weakness stays on board. Don't know where the Vegeta went, but... Definitely does not leave the board, I believe. Anthony's leader also is going to gain a 5k there as indicated on the power boost. Broly killed Vegeta. No, I don't th think so. No, the Broly tapped an energy. And, and in response to tapping the energy, well, attempting to tap the energy, Anthony had uh, responded with a Vegeta. This combo goes to the yard, I believe. Pretty sure this goes to the drop. So Amani just taking an attack with his leader, deciding not to go in with the Broly, with the Broly being decreased down to 5k, there was really no reason for him to start attacking with it. Ah, okay, okay, I see. Oh, okay, so he chooses to rest the Vegeta instead. Okay, I understand. So 
uh, on Broly's on Broly's play, Anthony responds with Vegeta. Then Amani chooses rest Vegeta instead of rest energy. Which you could have also he could have also uh, killed the Vegeta, correct? But I don't think killing the Vegeta there was right, just because drawing the card I think is a little bit more valuable to you if you're in Amani's position. Anthony goes Bean for turn. He's going to charge Bean for turn. decides to do here. He's going to attack with leader. 10. Not comboing. So he's not going to combo into Chi-Lai, which, which is currently awakened. Looks like Anthony's going to go in with Bardock Ape here. No negates from Amani. 20k double strike, says Anthony. Is there going to be a response this time? We saw Amani take the double 20k double strike with four or five energy up last turn. We'll see if he decides to do it again. Amani sitting with 14 cards in hand, three cards at life though. Anthony trying to crawl back into card advantage here with 11 cards in hand now. So closing the deficit by one. Amani deciding. Do I want to combo out of this? Is it worth? Going to one is pretty dangerous. Amani goes down to one? Holy cow. What's going on here? He must have like... No. We know what his secret rare is. But that's, that's crazy. Battle to the death. That's a good one. Battle to the death is going to be able to just KO that Broly. Let's look at Anthony's hand for a second here. Much smaller. Ten cards in hand. Five cards in life. I don't believe he takes any... Uh, any... I don't think he took any life. No, he, he decides to take zero life with the battle to the death. Shocking Death Ball. So the Vegeta draws out a Shocking Death Ball. I can only imagine what's in Amani's hand. Does he really have zero combo power and 15 cards? That's hard to believe. No 10Ks, no 5Ks? Well, there if you're at 1, actually. I think you have to negate regardless because he, like the Surge Crew player can then just dump on the Vegeta. Amani here, though, might have wanted to take that opportunity to get as many cards in hand to try to push as hard as possible this turn. That's probably the only thing that I can... I don't think, I don't think Amani's in here uh, in this for the long term. I think he's trying to close the game right now. We'll see if he actually does so, though. Or if he can. Search is pretty hard to beat. Search is at 5 right now. Amani charging to seven here. He's got big plans. Let's see what he's got. Looks like four energy here. We're going to see a maiden transformation. We are going to see a maiden transformation coming on the board for Amani. He's going to target two. Two four cost cards in the drop. Two maidens. 
So he's a few different options in this deck. He's got Kakunsa, he's got Ribrian, and he's got Ranbara. Rabanra. Rabanra. Rabanra hits the board in a multitude of two. We're going to see four cards flying out of Anthony's hand. We'll see what he chooses to discard here. Anthony going to go from 10 cards to 6 in just a moment once he decides what four cards he wants to lose. You can imagine that they're all pretty good. This play is going to swing advantage over to Amani in a pretty big way. Sensu Bean. Frost, Deadly Poison. Weiss Celestial Moderator. I like that. I actually like that card in Search Goo a lot. And another Bean. Anthony down to 6 in hand, 5 in life. Amani 14 in hand, 1 in life. Can he do it? Can he make it back all the way from 1 life? Amani taking this opportunity to use 2 more energy in what might be guessed as a Ribrian from the drop. Yep. Punishing Passion is going to make Anthony discard another two cards. Anthony's going down to four. He never sees Surge Cube with his little cards in hand. Yeah, this Chi list is great. This is like the third time we've seen it on stream, and it's just it's been great every single time. Let's see what car what two cards Anthony decides to get rid of next. He's gonna go down to four here, so they better be four pretty good cards. Looks like he's forced to get rid of that Beerus No Holds Barred. And Chompa the Trickster, both gone. Restore the universes for free. Chi Lai leader effect. For those of you who don't know in the chat, I had to read this a few times the first couple rounds, not going to lie. Choose two battle cards from your drop area with energy cost four or less and 15 power or more. And two, ba uh, two battle cards from your opponent's drop area with energy cost four or less and 15 game power or more. And you can reborn them. You essentially reborn two for your opponent, reborn two for yourself. But it is a cost. It's not just an effect. It's not one of those, oh, resolve as much as possible. You must have the targets in both drop areas in order to play this. So he's going to go ahead and restore. But his rest restoration is going to be much better than his opponent's. I can guarantee you that. He can, He has the option of bringing out two more Ron, uh, Rabanras and able to discard the rest of Anthony's hand if he do uh, does so, please. If he even has access to two more of these, but... Obviously, there's a bunch of different targets that Amani plays. We just have to see, check, uh, wait and see what he picks here. But Restore the Universes is a backbreaker. Oh, 15k or less. No.
Oh, so it gives you two. It gives you two 15k or less. Okay, it gives yourself two 15k or less. I wonder why he plays it then. It doesn't. It doesn't seem very good. Choose two battle cards from a battle with energy cost four or less and 15 power or more. Oh, 15 power or more. Yeah, it's 15 power or more. They're both 15 power. Uh, 15 power or more. He just ran out of these maidens. Cause he's bringing out Krillin and Android from his drop, and he's bringing out Oob. The good thing about the Krillin and Android, this is sent. Uh, this is effectively discard one. And then this is probably his only other target. And then the opponent's going to play Topo. Does Topo trigger? If it's your opponent's turn when you play this card for the duration of the turn. Wow. Yeah. I think that works. Yeah, that's funny. Topo actually works. And Topo doesn't have to discard. The discarding is only to play it from your hand as a counterattack. <laughs> so that's funny. So that that might have bit that might have bit Amani in the in, in the behind there. So Zeno down. Yeah, no wonder he played such a a such a um, a whatever uh, restore the universe. That restore the universe wasn't great. Um, at the very least, Anthony has the Topo activation at the. Very <laughs> but this Cell Zeno is gonna rip three, I believe. If you have five or more energy when you play this card, choose three cards in your opponent's hand, place them in the drop area, and this card gains dual attack. Okay, restore plays cards and tap. I was about to say, Amani, no, don't attack yet. You haven't even triggered Celzino. Tell Celzino is going to go and say, I'm hungry. Yeah, the battle cards for the opponent are not tapped. Who's in top four? This is Amani Edwards and Anthony Perez. Or Perez. I don't know if he spelled that wrong. Or if that's actually his name. Zeno going in for the win. I don't think. Well, Anthony's at five. So he can probably take an attack and then awaken. The thing is, by the time he takes an attack, he'll be at one. And then it doesn't matter about his leader shutting off his abilities. He should chi lie swing. Yeah, maybe. The thing is, the chi lie swing might. Yeah, I mean, it puts him at four. Is this. You need to be at five or less, right, for this awaken? I think the backside is five or less. Yeah, so at the backside's five or less. Then yeah, definitely you want to get the Chi-Li swing in here. Because otherwise with the Cell Zeno swing, you can just awaken. The thing is he can awaken right now. That's a good thing. So Amani's gonna have to discard two here because of the Tobo. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I would have swung with uh... the Celzino has dual attack. 
And he can't awaken if he attacks with this. It does give him four cards, but... Then even if he awakens, he can't take away, like, the, the quadruple strike. Because it doesn't matter. He's at one life. And remember, Amani does have 10 cards in it. Well, now, now 9. Anthony has 1 card in hand right now. So if he were to swing with Celzino here, he put 5 cards in Anthony's hand. And then Anthony's going to be at 1. So it doesn't matter at that point if Anthony negates all the skills. Because he just win anyways, because he's at one. So he needs to have negate. I don't know. I think I think that would have been. Krillin Andrew. Ooh, so he does have a way to discard one more card here. Okay. So if he has this, then yeah, this is much better. Cause now now there's no way for Anthony to awaken. In this situation, now he gets rid of a card. Yeah. Now he can take this life and still not be able to awaken. But if he did not have this, then this attack here would have gotten him enough to awaken. And negate the cell. But thankfully he had Krillin. So that made it that made this the correct play. Obviously we didn't have that information, but I think without this, you just go in with this first. But this should be a game ender right here. Amani's gonna have to discard two. Wait, Topo. Go down to six cards in hand. Yeah, he discarded for Topo on the on the Chi Lai swing. He still has to discard for this one, and he does. Discarding Ribrian and Cold Bloodlust, and that is game. Game over. Game number two in just a moment. Don't go anywhere. Start on is there. Surge goes Frost Deadly Poison Pass. Amani going second. Charges Krillin and Android 18. Uses the ability. Fetches Dragon Ball. Beerus Fickle God. Discarding Super Saiyan Vegeta, exploiting weakness. 10 is the attack. Any invokers? Not that I saw. We're going to be posting some deck lists after the event. Make sure you guys follow the. Uh, the Facebook group. I'll drop the Facebook group in the description. I think that's what it is. Yeah, so make sure you guys are a part of that group so you can see all the information that gets posted after this event. But I did not see any on stream. But we're going to be looking at people's deck submissions. We have the deck submissions here from everybody that entered. So even if they may have not made it to the top cut, we'll be able to save the information on our end. But I, th I think Invoker is so good right now. It has like, it got like three great cards. Maybe even four, technically. You could call it four cards. Topo is the charge for Anthony. Heartfelt plea is the discard. 10. Amani's going to take this opportunity to throw a ape to the yard for later use. Yeah, Invoker is very high skill cap, and it does take a while to play it too. Like, you have to be fluent in the online um, 
in the online atmosphere and be very good. Like, I don't see anybody but maybe Justin taking that to an online tournament. And he has to be fluent with the with the program, too. Like, if you're not fluent with Octagon or Untap or whatever, then you're going to go into time more than you win, you know? I like Invoke Her a lot, too. I haven't given a try with the new stuff yet. But it's always been... Um, it's always been my deck of choice. Since Tournament of Power, um, after that, I kind of opted for a more aggressive version of Invoker. Had a small reduced Invoker line with Android uh, 17 lead. But, yeah, the deck is definitely powerful. Those colors are powerful. I just really like red, blue, and what they have to offer. Looks like Chila is going to end their turn here. They're just going to take their turn to draw two cards and pass turn. Kind of stock up on some resources. Let's see what Anthony chooses to use his turn on. He's going to charge Bean, attack with lead. Another heartfelt please to the drop area. So it is quite possible that either Anthony is just hopping off the whole, uh, like, the possibility of him playing it, or he might have seen the third copy you know, and has the third copy in his hand. Oh, 16 life. Holy cow. You have 16 life. Alright, so he's moving his extra life into his deck. Easy fix. Too much life there, yeah. Just twice the amount of life there. Okay, she's shuffling life, shuffling deck after fixing the error. And back to your regular scheduled program. <laughs> Chilai coming out. Awaken for Amani.
<laughs> random misclick on the SS Broly. Amani draws one. Chilai taking a swing at Surge Coup. Let's see if uh, Anthony decides to combo off an ape here. No counters from Anthony. Made in transformation, like clockwork, I feel like it comes down every turn four for Armani. He's going to use that to go and probably get us a few of our favorite four drop here. Rabanra, Maiden Devotee. So it looks like he does have two accessible in the drop area. Anthony's going to have to drop four cards here. So it looks like he's going to go with the 7-drop. Yeah, I don't think you have enough time against a deck like Amani's to set up that 7-drop. Battle to the death, eh, I mean, having the ability to take your own life, seeing that you just got killed from at 5 life, is probably one that I would keep in hand. Uh, the Supple Strike Champa is fine, and regular Champa the Trickster. There's not really anything you can Champa the Trickster in Amani's deck other than Cell Secret Rare, but... Keeping that hand, that card in hand is just, it's hard. It's hard to keep answers like that just for a specific card in your hand, especially when you're playing against hand control. We see Anthony here drawing to f six, then charging down to five, seven life here. Amani sitting at 12 cards in hand with five cards in life, really just opening the gap in card advantage between him and Anthony, putting himself in the driver's seat. Battle to the death, so it does look like he did keep a copy. So Rabanra, uh, this also has a pretty unique ability. Rabanra does that when it's uh, when it's. Uh, Removed from the battle area by an opponent's skill or KO'd. You can choose one green battle card with energy cost of three or less in your drop area and play with skills negated for the rest of the turn. So he's actually able to play this Dr. Jiro Progenerative Evil for free, effectively. Yeah, battle to the death. I think, um, yeah, he needs to tap uh, red-yellow there.
Yeah, definitely. Probably keeping this uh, the seven drop probably would have been good. You're right, like you point out uh, in chat. Non keyword autos just um, make them place a card from their hands to the drop to activate. So I don't know if he has access to the red freeze. Them. Maybe he does in his hand. Maybe he doesn't. But yeah, playing this against them just seems extremely, extremely good. So Amani comboing with the Dr. Zero from hand. The reason is the Dr. Zero on board that was uh, played has its got it has its uh, skills negated. So the record right now, uh, Amani's up one game. So Amani, uh, Chi Live player, is up one game versus Zero for Search Crew. This is game two. We have 27 minutes left in the round. He's going to go ahead and tap that Dr. Zero with his Bardock Ape. He's going to draw a card, go up to nine. Anthony catching back up on card advantage here, surprisingly. That battle to the death was great, and I'm glad that he kept one copy. I was really scared when he pitched the first one. Twenty double strike at the leader. I would assume Amani takes this just because he's tapped out. But actually, he does have Dr. Jiro here. Another Dr. Jiro to really just save the day. Put himself at 25 to his opponent's 20. He's going to be able to send a Ribrian Punishing Passion. So he's going to be able to send uh, this little menace over here, which is going to be able to be um, used to discard two from Anthony's hand. Also, he also comboed the run Rabanra from the field to have access to it for another maiden transformation possibly coming down the line. We'll see if that actually becomes a play for Armani as he goes into his fifth turn here. Amani's going to go ahead and take use of his energy and play a Ribrian Punishing Passion, sending it, sending it from drop to warp to make Anthony discard two. He's going to go down to seven cards in hand, and there goes a Beerus and a Double Striker. Amani's going to spend another two energy to seems like, yeah, another copy of Ribrian that he had tucked away in the drop area. Amani's sitting with 10 cards in hand here. We can look at his drop area right here now. We can see that he has access to another Ribrian. He has seven Dragon Balls. Another two Maidens here. So next turn, he can actually set up another Maiden transformation for two Rabanras. And even if he doesn't, he still has access to two Ribrians here for four energy discarding four cards. He can also use the four energy to discard four cards with the mating transformation play. Restore the universes. Oh no. Restore the universes is going to get him those two maidens from the drop area. That's going to result in another discard four coming right at Anthony. Anthony's going to go from five cards to one. This has been a discard eight turn. 
if he gets back the two Rabanras. This game seems all but over. Can Anthony mount a comeback? He's at four. Amani doesn't seem like he can pressure lethal this turn. It looks, it seems as if Amani's just gonna have to pass turn, just having one energy up. That's pretty scary. If you're on Amani's side, your opponent just played two double strike chompas. It's gonna be able to get you down on life real fast. The problem is Amani's not sitting at four. Amani's sitting at five. Anthony's going to say goodbye to the good majority of his hand. Anthony is going to be able to draw up to two. Skip charge, attack with leader, go to three, though, if there's anything to kind of redeem. But it looks like Amani's not going to stop with the pressure. He's going to go after that Bardock ape. He's going to try to get that pressure off board. He's going to go and combo a Dr. Giro from hand. Which is interesting. I don't know why he just doesn't combo with the Dr. Row from field. Is this still negated? It's only skills negated for the turn. So I think that was last turn. Oh, and Acrylin's going to come down to put Anthony down to zero. I still don't think... I still think it's too early to go for kill, obviously. But if Amani has Cell Zeno, then... That's going to be a F Cinderella <laughs> story ending. For Amani, closing the game both ways the same way he did the first. And God, please don't tell me. Not like this. Not like this. Oh, no. Say it ain't so. Cell Zeno comes in. For the game. You hate to see it. But you love to see it from Amani's perspective. That is the game. Amani Edwards advances to the top two finals. We'll be back. Don't go nowhere.